Hey guys, welcome to Plants and Politics. This Saturday is the best Saturday of the month. You know why? Because it's the day that I hang out with friends of the show on Zoom. If you'd like to hang out with me this weekend, click on the link in the description box below to become a friend of Plants and Politics. It's less than $5 a month. And if you can't swing $4.99, please consider becoming a supporter of the show for only $1.99 a month. That's $1.99 a month. Thank you guys for your support. Thank you for your subscriptions and your continued faith in me and the show that I do every day. Enjoy the show. Hey everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. I have an update to share about one of Trump's capital insurrectionists. It's time for an episode of Where Are They Now? Matthew Bledsoe was arrested. Patrick Montgomery was in court. Jonathan Manapa will stay in federal custody. No, I don't take responsibility at all. You guys are definitely going to remember 49-year-old California resident Mariposa Castro. Castro, who also goes by the name for some reason of Imelda Acosta, is a huge Trump fan, and she apparently doesn't realize she's not white and how much disdain he has for non-white people. Um, she became pretty well known at pro-Trump anti-lockdown events because she dress up in notable outfits and she carried pro-Trump anti-Biden signs. Well, on January 6th, Castro live streamed from the Capitol to Facebook and she showed herself climbing into the building. She climbed in through a broken window. She entered a Senate room where people were in there breaking up furniture, you know, destroying the whole room. And as she climbed through the window, she was heard on video saying, I'm going in. I'm going in the Capitol. We're in. We're inside the Capitol house. We got inside the Capitol. Castro climbed back out a little while later, and she said in the Facebook video that she had to get out of there because apparently police had released some sort of chemical agent and she said she couldn't breathe. So Castro clearly knew they weren't supposed to be in the building, right? They don't gas you to welcome you. And she also knew that everyone was destroying the building and what was in it because, I mean, number one, she climbed through a broken window, but two, like I said, she's in a room where people are trashing furniture so that they can use the legs and things as weapons. But also in another portion of her video, you could see members of the mob pulling a door out of the broken Capitol window. A door, you guys. I'm not talking about like a cabinet door, like a, you know, kitchen cabinet door. I mean a full size door that you walk through. So these people either took a door off the hinges or they broke it down and then they removed it from the building and you could see them carrying it over to the lower West Terrace tunnel, which was right by where she was located to use against officers. So while this is going on in the background, Castro, who's still live streaming, she's talking with someone off camera. And that person warned that, quote, traitors will be shot. And then Castro replies to this man and says, quote, we're coming and, quote, this is war. Then the following day after the attack, Castro went back on Facebook and she said, quote, I will be making a video in a while to talk about what happened yesterday from D.C. Washington. I mean, I just think it's better if she doesn't speak. Anyway, she went on to complain about tear gassing and how she could feel aches and pains, which why? I don't know. <laughs> Nobody touched her, but, you know, she's clout chasing. So anyway, she then said, quote, I'm going back out to D.C. Capitol. This is not over. Three exclamation points. Again, probably better if you just don't speak. But I digress. So Castro told her followers that she has, quote, so much proof of what happened on the 1-6-2021. Um, and she said, quote, I made it out, but for a while, I thought I was going to die. Really? From tear gas? <laughs> and if you thought you were going to die, Mariposa, how do you think police felt? How do you think lawmakers felt? 
Anyway, she kept posting and confessing to the feds. In another Facebook post, she wrote, quote, I'm in jail on my Mariposa FB account because of all the videos I was posting from the Capitol State, D.C. Hmm, it's called the U.S. Capitol in D.C., and it's spelled with an O, not an A. So Castro shared another video following the Capitol attack, and she called herself brave. She also encouraged others to be more like her, according to the prosecutor. She said, quote, we showed them, we showed them all, showed this one. War just started. It's just the beginning. As Trump says, the best is yet to come. It was so ugly. It got ugly in there. It got really ugly. I'm literally by myself. They told me not to be on my own, to find a crowd, and I'm all by myself. That just shows how brave I am. If I can do this, you guys can do this. You guys can break the law too. My words, not hers. So this stable genius was arrested on January 21st of last year. She was charged with the four standard misdemeanors, entering a restricted building or grounds, two counts of disorderly conduct, and the one count of parading or demonstrating in a capital. Well, she took a plea deal on November 24th. She pleaded guilty to the parading charge, which I cannot believe prosecutors accepted but she was facing up to six months in prison, up to five years of probation, and or up to $5,000 in fines and restitution fees. The prosecutors, however, were only asking for 60 days in jail. Well, in a letter to the court, Castro apologized, and she called her actions a, quote, regrettable lapse in judgment that has had a negative effect on my family and all concerned. Um, she also said that she only planned to participate in a peaceful protest, but she was influenced by the crowd. <laughs> Castro also tried to explain away calling for war. She said that it was just hyperbole. And she asked the judge, quote, how many times do we say things in an exaggerated manner just to show how hurt we feel? It isn't to be taken literally. We don't put it into action. That's a good and mature quality. Otherwise, none of us would be standing. Uh, really? No. The mature thing to do is to do some research and not fall for a lifelong con artist just because he was nice to you one time on a golf course, which is what she explains as her reason for supporting Trump. He was nice to her when he almost hit her with a golf ball. Oh, well, that's a reason to follow a guy who can't stand you because of the color of your skin and your nationality. Sure. But, you know, the next the mature thing to do is try this. Don't break the law. And then don't live stream your crimes like a teenager looking for attention. How about that? And then don't hurl threats of violence in those videos. Yeah, you're anything but mature, Castro. And at 49, that's not looking good for you. Sorry, just had to get that out of the way, out of my system. <laughs> Anyway, back to the hearing. In court and in tears, Castro told the judge, quote, I don't glorify my actions. I got caught up on the energy. And if I could go back and change things over, I definitely would have brought more peace. And then she said, I'm not joking about this. She told the judge that, quote, dark energy forces sucked her in at the Capitol. Um, Castro's attorney said that her client is a, quote, quiet, gentle soul who supports the military, firefighters, and the police. Yeah, she sure has a funny way of showing it. And you know what surprised me in hearing that is to hear how many socialist programs and policies Castro supports. I mean, she's a MAGA fan. Shouldn't she be against all of these socialist programs? Hmm. Um, so her attorney went on to say that Castro and her husband, quote, had to move out of California due to the loss of employment and income, womp womp and thoughts and prayers. And she claims that Castro is, quote, embarking on a new life, which she hopes will return her back to one of peace and tranquility in which she can give back to others. 
So U.S. District Judge Reggie Walton presided over Castro's case, and he wasn't buying this spiritual, airy-fairy, kumbaya bullshit any more than I am. Um, Judge Walton noted that Castro appeared, quote, gleeful and happy during the Capitol attack. The judge also said, quote, I've been reading a couple of books about how civil war starts and so much of history is repeating itself in our country. I love this country. This country has been good to me. And to see what people are trying to do to this country is just very concerning. With that, he sentenced Castro to 45 days in jail and a $5,000 fine. Still not enough, in my opinion, for someone who's literally calling for war and encouraging others to follow her lead. But it's a lot better than what we've been seeing with these ridiculous parading plea deals. So, you know, I don't know. I I don't buy her apology at all. And I have a feeling that we're going to be seeing and hearing more of her in the future. So I'll keep you guys posted. I'll let you know if I hear anything else. But like I said, better than better than what we've been getting but not good enough. Like I said, the anti-Goldilocks. All right. Thanks so much for watching and listening, guys. Take care. I'll talk with you soon. 